Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try to solve this problem, and then press play and we'll solve it together. All right, so we've got a problem with a square root and we want to solve for x. So how are we going to do that? Well, typically, I mean, I'm not saying that there's an algorithm that will always work, and, but typically what I would do is I would try and square both sides. But before I do that, I try to get this term that has a square root all by itself. It's typically my approach. So to do that, I'm going to subtract x on both sides and I get, a little sloppy, sorry, the square root of 2x minus 7. I'm going to start over. This does not look good. Oops. I'm going to erase this. OK, let's try it one more time. Uh, you know what? May I'll zoom out so the pen doesn't look as rough. All right. So here we have, I'm just going to rewrite the whole thing, the square root of 2x minus 7 plus x equals 5. Subtract x on both sides. And I get the square root of 2x minus 7 equals 5 minus x. Now it's easier to square both sides. If you squared this, you'd have to do distribution of two terms. But here, if we square this side, that will just cancel out the square root. So we get 2x minus 7. Now 5 minus x squared, we're going to have to distribute. Okay, And we get 25 minus 5x minus 5x is minus 10x plus x squared, and that equals 2x minus 7. And now we go a little bit further. I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides and add 7. Do that all at once. Add 7, subtract 2x, add 7, subtract 2x on both sides of my equation. This cancels to 0, and I get 32 minus 12x plus x squared. I'm going to write it the other way, just a little bit easier for my brain. x squared minus 12x. I'm swapping this side with this side. Plus 32 equals 0. And that's going to factor to x minus 4 and x minus 8. Right, two numbers that multiply to positive 32 but add to negative 12. So therefore, x could be 4 or 8. But be careful. If you're ever dealing with a problem with a square root or a fraction with an x in the denominator, it's possible it could be undefined. In this case, it's possible because when you're dealing with the square root and solving, you're squaring both sides. You could create extraneous solutions. So let's check both of these real quick. And I think we'll find that one of them is extraneous. So first we check with x equals 4. So if x is 4, remember the equation is 2x minus 7 plus x equals 5. So if you see a square root, do this checking guarantee. I mean, you should always check if you can. And that's going to be 2 times 4 is 8 minus 7 plus 4. Does that equal 5? Well, 8 minus 7 is 1. So square root of 1 plus 4 equals 5. Square root of 1 is just 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 is 5. It checks out. What about 8? Let's try 8. I don't think it works. Let's just, let's just check. So you get 16 minus 7 plus 8 equals 5. 16 minus 7 is 9. So we have the square root of 9 plus 8. And that's not 5, is it? If we took the negative square root of 9, negative 3, it would work. But this implies a positive square root. So it's 3 plus 8 equals 5. And that's not true, right? 3, 11 does not equal 5. So this is extraneous. It doesn't work, right? This is not true. So the answer is when x equals 4. Now, if we go back, let me just say this again. If you ever come across a problem with the square root, I find that you're often given a situation where one of the solutions you get is, in fact, extraneous on the regions. They're designing questions like that. So look out for it. And also, if you ever see a situation where you have some number and like x squared or x and in your denominator, make sure you check that, right? Again, whatever solutions you get for x, plug it back in and make sure that the solution is not extraneous. All right, thank you.